welcome back to BeHookedCrochet.com. I'm your host, Brittany, and in today's tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate how to crochet a simple granny diamond motif. Now, for the purpose of this demonstration, I'll be using a medium or a worsted weight yarn and a size 5 millimeter hook. But just know that this motif is pretty flexible and you can play with the weight of yarn and the size of the hook in order to customize the project that you're working on. To begin our diamonds, we want to start out with a slip knot. And now we'll chain three. This is going to be the start of our diamond, so we need to turn this into a round. And we're going to do that by slip stitching into the first chain that we created. Now we're ready to proceed to round one. So when I'm working with these really small starting circles, I try to insert my finger into the middle of the ring. That way it just makes it a little bit easier to work my very first stitches into that ring. To start off round one, we want to chain seven. And this chain seven is going to count as a treble crochet. These are English terms. So a treble crochet and three chains. Next we want to make a treble crochet in the middle of the ring. And we'll do that one more time, another treble crochet. So don't forget on our trebles we wrap the yarn around our hook twice create a slightly longer stitch. And we're using these treble crochets to kind of give us that longer effect on the points where we want the diamond shape to form. Next we want to make two double crochets in the middle of the ring. Next we're going to chain one. Now make two more double crochets in the middle of the ring. And now two treble crochets in the middle of the ring. Now we want to chain three. Now let's talk about where we're located in our diamond. So we have this treble, or what our chain four, which is counting as a treble crochet and three chains, and this is one of the long points. And we've added this chain one, that's gonna be what I'm gonna call the softer point in the diamond. And this will come together once we finish this round. And we've just made this chain three which mimics the chain three on the other side. So that means we're halfway through round one. So now we want to make two treble crochets in the center of the ring. and two double crochets. Now we'll chain one and we'll finish things off with two more double crochets and a treble crochet. Thank you. 
And the reason why we didn't put two treble crochets to end the round one was because this chain four, or rather this chain seven, four of those chains are counting as a treble crochet. So we don't need to add an additional stitch there. What we need to do is just count up and we're going to join in the fourth chain. And we'll join with a slip stitch as usual. Now this starts to come together. So those chain threes, as I said, are kind of the long points because that's the longer point of the diamond. And then we have our chain ones that are acting as the soft corners. So now we're ready to proceed with round two. Now to begin round two, we want to chain six. And this chain six is counting as one double crochet and three chains. So round two is gonna be a little bit different than round one. We're no longer gonna use these long stitches because we've already accomplished the shape that we want. So from here on out, we're just gonna work in double crochets. So I mentioned that the first part of this chain, three of those chains are counting as a double crochet. Now what we wanna do is make two double crochets into this chain three space. Next, we wanna make one double crochet into each of the next four stitches. Now, we don't wanna skip this stitch here. Sometimes it gets a little bit covered up by our two double crochets in the chain space. But if you look closely, you can see that opening here, or if you turn it up, you can see the V pretty clearly there. That's one of the easiest ways to mess up your stitch count when you're working with this pattern. Now once you've double crocheted into each of those next four stitches, we want to locate that chain one gap space. And you can see that right here. So I have my last stitch and then you see this little guy right there is my chain. So this is one of our soft corners as I'm calling them for this pattern. So what we want to do in these corners is make a double crochet in the space. So you don't have to work into the chain. Okay, and now chain two, we're just creating the corner and exaggerating it a little bit, and double crochet into the same gap space. Now we'll want to continue on as usual. So we'll double crochet once into each of these next four stitches. Again, making sure we don't skip this stitch here because it gets covered up in that chain. Now when you get to your next corner here, what we want to do is make two double crochets in the chain space. Now chain three. And two more double crochets in that same space. Now we continue on like we did before. One double crochet into each of these four stitches. Now 
Now we locate that chain one space right there, and we'll treat this one the same. One double crochet, chain two, and one double crochet, all in that same space. Now to finish things off, we're going to make one double crochet into each of the last four stitches. Now when we get to this last part, it can get a little bit confusing because we have our starting chain here acting as our last stitch. So I want to point out that we're still going to make a double crochet into each of the four stitches that you see here. And since this one is a chain, we're going to be working our fourth stitch right here. Now we're not quite finished because we need to have two double crochets for this corner and right now we only have the one. So we're going to put the remaining double crochet into the chain space from round one. Okay, it looks a little bit neater that way. Now we're going to finish things off by making a slip stitch into the third chain. So you can see my first chain here is slightly covered up by my stitch, second and the third chain is right there. Now that finishes off round number two. So round number three is the last round that we're going to be doing for this tutorial, but just know that you actually can continue to increase and make this a bigger diamond if you wish. However, for this tutorial, we're just covering the three rounds because the pattern that I will be releasing later on this month, we only need three rounds in order to make the pattern. So that's what we're going to cover here. And we're going to start round three exactly the same as round two. We're going to chain six. Now everything from here on out is going to be the same as round two. We just of course have a different number of stitches. So we want to double crochet two times into this chain space. And one time into each of the next seven stitches. Now for these softer corners, we're going to make a double crochet, two chains, and another double crochet, all in that same space. Now one double crochet into each of the next seven stitches.
Now for this corner, we will make two double crochets, three chains, and two double crochets all within that same space. And then of course one double crochet into each of the next seven, which I've already started my first one there. At this point we're really just repeating the same pattern. Now this corner, double crochet, two chains, double crochet. And then double crochet once into each of the last seven stitches. And just like we did in the previous round, since our seventh stitch here that we're supposed to work into is a chain, it's easier and neater if we work our last double crochet into this space right here. Now to finish things off, we'll make our final double crochet just into that chain gap space from round two. That way we have two double crochets, a chain three, and two double crochets to finish off this pattern. So the last thing we need to do is make a slip stitch into our third chain. So you can see one, two, and three. And if it's a little bit difficult for you to make sure you're slip stitching into the correct place, you can always count from the other direction. So counting one, two, and three for the chain three, and then you would just go into the next chain and slip stitch. So coming from this direction, you would be slip stitching in the fourth, if that's a little bit easier for you to manage. Now, of course, the last thing that we want to do is bind off. And I'll quickly demonstrate the way I weave in my ends for this motif. I'll typically start with the end that's in the very middle. Thread your darning needle. And whenever you're working in a round like this, this part is really easy. You just work it under all of these stitches from that very first round. And I usually try to go about one time around the circle before I trim things off. Now for this last one, I like to weave it in on the wrong side. So you can see this is the, the wrong side of the work. And now to make our bind off nice and clean, what I typically will do is kind of work my darning needle in the chain next to it to sort of flatten it out, hide it a little bit. Then flip it over and I'll work it down because I want to get 
to this point so I can work it under this line of stitches right here. So I'm just working it down in that direction, catching the, sti the uh, loops there from that final double crochet. And then I just want to work it under four or five stitches. And then turn it. And then you would just want to switch directions and go back the other way. This is one of the secrets to making sure your ends don't come out. It's just going back and forth. And if you can get your needle to work in the fibers, so kind of splitting the yarn, that's also a really good trick to make sure your ends don't come out. Okay, so once you're sure that it is nice and secure, trim off that tail, and now your diamond is complete. So what I have for you here is a beautiful example of how you can use this diamond motif. Now basically all this is is a larger motif. So you're thinking what on earth could I do with this? Yeah, it's really pretty to look at, but what could I do with this? Well, motifs are really great to piece together to make bigger projects. So what I have done here was taken multiple of these small diamonds, turned it into one bigger motif. And now you guys have had some really excellent ideas for this particular star motif. I've been sharing it on Instagram and Facebook and you all have been watching me throughout this designing process. So some of the cool ideas that you guys have come up with are afghans. This is really great for kind of a Christmassy theme or Christmas decorations. You guys have mentioned making a tree skirt out of it, which I think would be really cool. You could make this as a wall hanging, which actually I think that is what I'm going to be doing with my motif is I'm going to mount it and hang it on the wall in one of our guest bedrooms. So I know you're probably asking the question, now where on earth can I get the pattern for this motif that I'm looking at right here, this larger star hexagon? And I'm really glad you asked. This is a free pattern that's going to be available on July 17th at BeHookedCrochet.com. So if you're watching this in the future, you can head on over to BeHookedCrochet.com slash star hexi. That's S-T-A-R-H-E-X-I. And that's going to give you access to the free pattern. If you're watching this before July 17, 2016, keep an eye out at BeHookedCrochet.com. You'll find the pattern there on July 17th. That wraps up our tutorial today on the granny diamond motif. If you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to leave a comment below or head on over to facebook.com slash behookedcrochet, like the page, leave your question or your comment. I'd be glad to read through them and help you out if you have any questions whatsoever. On behalf of behookedcrochet.com, I'm your host Brittany, and we'll see you in the next episode at behookedcrochet.com.